So in this video, we're going to continue on uh, with our multiple linear regression analysis. And at the end of the previous video, we got this residual plot and realized that maybe this isn't the best set of predictors that we could possibly include for our model. And so we're going to, in this video, introduce a way to do a correlation-based variable selection. And so, so far we've sort of been throwing, um, we threw this state variable at the analysis because we thought maybe this is important, um, but we didn't include any other variables. And when you have a large data set like this, you can try to put, throw all of the variables at it and see which ones are important, but there are just so many that at times it can become important to, to maybe take a step back and see which ones are already highly correlated and then focus on including those variables. And so I've already selected, um, down-selected a few of these um, variables. So we've got our response variable here, and these are just some explanatory variables that I thought might be important. Note that they're all numeric variables which really helps, um, which is important for getting correlation because we can't really get a correlation between a categorical and a quantitative variable. But this is a way to maybe see which of these are important to include in our model. So the first step is to actually create this correlation matrix. And I'm gonna call it core matrix. And we take our selected data set and we just say core. And this is the same correlation command that we've learned in um, the linear regression lesson. It's just not being applied to any single variable, but it's being applied to all of them. So that's what happens when we leave it empty. And so we can see that we now have this correlation matrix where we can see where variables are highly correlated to NOx, RGGI, and where they aren't highly correlated. And so what we are going to do is actually plot that to be a little bit more um, a visual way to show what these variables are. You could easily go through and make your selection just based off of these numbers. Before we can plot using ggplot though, we need to melt the data set. So ggplot, if you recall, really likes those long form matrices, and this is a bit too wide. So we're gonna melt, and it's gonna look a little different from our previous melt. For one, we're not gonna tell it which variables because we want to melt all of them, but we are gonna say to not ignore the index because we this is currently an index column here, and we want it to be included. So don't ignore the index. And then after we melt, we're going to reset index. So we're not telling it what to melt or what to call any of these variables, just saying melt them all, including the index. So to give you an idea about what this looks like, I forgot my dot melt command. So core matrix dot melt, and then give the ignore index false and run it that way. So now we can see that our index is one variable and then our variable became all of these um, column names. So now we can connect variable um, column or row variable to column variable to the correlation. And then we can plot that using ggplot. And so our data is now core matrix melt. And our geom, this is a new geom that we haven't used before, is geom tile. Within our AES, we can say X is now index. 
y is now variable. And we're going to fill it based off of value. And these are just these column names up here. And then just to make it a little bit easier to read, I'm going to add a theme element where I actually change the axis text angle to be 90 on the x-axis. So we can run that and we can see a correlation matrix. And so the correlation matrix, um, dark purple is going to be an okay negative correlation and yellow is going to be a perfect positive correlation. And so we can see here that there's a block of yellow that are all fairly in green that are fairly correlated with each other. We can see some dark num correlation here and here. And then we've got a lot of sort of in-between stuff around here. But what we are interested in is this RGGI row. And we want to go across here and see, okay, CO2 base is pretty highly correlated, less so here. Okay, NOx base is good. It's one-to-one, -one, perfectly correlated with NOx RGGI. We've got PM10 and PM25, SOX. Start to get some less good um, correlations here. And then some of the stack things seem to be decently correlated. So stack diameter, stack height, and so forth. So then we could go through and write those down and figure out which ones we actually want to include in our next round of multiple linear regressions. So I'm going to create a new variable called results2 so that I don't override my original results. And I'm once again using that SMF OLS. So we start with our Y data tilde x data. So I'm going to do NOx base, which was important, plus CO2 base was important, PM10 base, PM25 base. We'll add in SOx base. And we still want to keep our state variable. And I'm also going to add in a second categorical variable in fuel type. And then finally, minus one. And then we need to tell it our data. Is DF merged? And once again, we set has const equal to true and tack the fit onto that. So then we can print results2.summary. And so we can compare now. So if we go back up here, we can see our adjusted R squared was 7.761. And now it's 0.786. So we have seen quite a large improvement there um, to sort of bo bolster that adjusted R squared. We're still seeing a significant p-value. And then we can come in here and now we've got a lot more data. We can see that in terms of fuel type, um, the coal category is critical for, is very significant for this prediction, which makes sense. Um, coal plants do tend to have um, quite a bit of NOx emissions. So it makes sense that whether or not a power plant is coal-based or natural gas-based or nuclear does have an impact on their NOx emissions. And we can also see what was significant down here. So SOX was actually not very significant. So perhaps we could remove that in a third round. Um, we could add more variables. So I didn't add any of those stack-based variables the stack height or the stack diameter. So perhaps adding those could lead to an improvement. 
Um, but there are lots of things that you could continue to do to further increase this adjusted R squared value. 